I used to know everything. Then I come back five years later, and now I know nothing. The important thing is, you're here. Spider-Man. The Endgame has come and gone, and now many eagerly wait for Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe to arrive, but the global lockdown delayed a lot of things. But there are supposed to be major things on the horizon once things get back on track, and that includes the arrival of the second Doctor Strange film called The Multiverse of Madness. What could this film entail? And will the original live-action movie Spider-Man return? Allow us to break it all down for you. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. The Spider Spider-Man Rumor do you want to win a brand new iPhone or a brand new MacBook Pro? Maybe you'd prefer a $500 Amazon gift card. Well, comment the hidden message in this video for a chance to enter to win. Let's start off with a big one. There are rumors that various Marvel characters who have been on screen in the past but haven't been a part of the MCU could make a return via the Multiverse of Madness. And one of the biggest rumors is that of Tobey Maguire from the original Spider-Man movies from Sony. It might seem odd that he would be chosen, but don't forget he was the original and in many ways, his time in the role didn't get a satisfying ending because Spider-Man 3 was planned and the fourth film that was supposed to be made didn't get made. So, in many ways, this could be a chance to help right the ship, even if it's only for a small role to help give Maguire the closure that many feel he deserves. Now, there are some who would say that Maguire deserves to be in Into the Spider-Verse 2, which is also coming out in the somewhat near future, and for the record, we would agree. If for no other reason than to potentially get a Spider-Verse multiverse meeting between Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and of course, Tom Holland. But whether that happens or not is still up in the air. Plus, while an anime animated voiceover reunion would be cool, it might be better to give Maguire one last run in the tights for old time's sake. Not unlike what DC Comics did with Wesley Allen's ship via their crossover special Elseworlds and Crisis on Infinite Earths. And if you need more proof that the Sam Raimi Spider-Man might return, there is one thing you need to know. Sam Raimi is the new director of the film after Scott Derrickson dropped out, so there is literally no better time to revisit his former universe than now, since he is essentially directing both. Plus, never forget, it's a multiverse that Doctor Strange will apparently be going into, and thus he he should meet someone we know in that universe hopping adventure, right? Iron Man is back. As a villain? This one is a very unlikely rumor, but it is indeed something curious to think about, because maybe it's not just a multiverse, but a multiverse of madness. And despite their rocky relationship when they met, Strange did have a connection with Stark, to the extent that he trusted him enough to survive long enough to sacrifice himself in the endgame moment that broke all of our hearts. However, what if, in an epic twist of fate, Tony Stark returns as a part of the Multiverse of Madness as a villain. Before you said Tony Stark is never a villain, you would be wrong. Because in multiple alternate universes, Tony did go villainous, including one time deconstructing his own body so that only his brain could survive, and being able to use that brain to operate anything technological. Another time in the 616 universe, a personality switch spell led to Tony Stark becoming evil in a large sense, without being too overt. Basically, he became a jerk. That would do all sorts of questionable things that the real Tony Stark wouldn't even think of, like using people as human shields in one case, or erasing the memories of Daredevil because he figured out what Tony was going to do with the people. The point is, when it comes to the multiverse, anything is possible. And what would be more maddening for someone like Strange than to see a world where Stark was not only alive, but the tyrant ruler of it? That could create some tension to say the least. But Tony might not be the only one causing tension. The true Scarlet at which. Even though the vast majority of fans love the Marvel Cinematic Universe, there have been some stumbling blocks, if you will, concerning certain characters. Two of the biggest ones came via the film Age of Ultron, where we were introduced to Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. In the comics, they're the children of Magneto, though technically that's been retconned and rebuilt, it's complicated, and thus were mutants. However, in the movies, they were byproducts of experiments that concerned one of the Infinity Stones, which was fine in context, but fans were really quick
quick to note that they weren't exactly up to snuff with their comic counterparts, including a climactic moment when Quicksilver saves Hawkeye but couldn't outrun bullets and thus dies. That rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. As for Scarlet Witch, when she showed some of her power in certain ways, including warping minds, the scale of her powers has been very much held back, which brings us to not just Multiverse of Madness, but WandaVision. Recall that Disney Plus is a streaming service that will feature extensions of the MCU, including a show about Wanda and the Vision, living in a sitcom of Wanda's own making. Recall that Vision died because of Thanos, and that hit Wanda very hard, to the extent that she apparently is suffering from a psychotic break in the WandaVision series, and when Wanda Maximoff has a mental break, bad things tend to happen. Comic fans will know this from the classic X-Men arc House of M, where Wanda rewrote all of reality so that mutants were in charge and that her father Magneto ruled over all. But it went horribly wrong in all sorts of ways, and as a result, she uttered three of the most infamous words in Marvel Comics history, no more mutants. Yep. With those three words, she wiped millions of mutants off the map, either killing or depowering them and leaving only about 200 plus alive on all of planet Earth. What does this have to do with Doctor Strange? It's been confirmed that Wanda will be in the movie, and it's possible that she could be a major driving force for all that's happening, including the plot possibly being that she goes through the multiverse in search of another vision to love, which always works out so well, and thus causes Doctor Strange to go after her and stop her. The two have a rather unique relationship in the past in the comics, so it would be interesting to see how it all plays out if they go this path. Supernatural Avengers Whether fans want to admit it or not, the MCU is a little bit behind the eight ball right now, because they've spent over 10 years and over 20 films building up to Endgame, and now it's over, which cost them big names like Iron Man and Captain America as a result. Thor is still around, but some wonder if that will be enough. Doctor Strange, though, could be the perfect outlet for bringing in some new and familiar faces to help spice things up and show a powerful scale of things. Which brings us to the latest rumor on our list. Because of the potential scope of Multiverse of Madness, there are some saying that Doctor Strange might need some help, including going and collecting certain supernatural Avengers to come and help him fight whatever the threat is. This could be how Wanda is brought into things as a matter of fact, but she could also be the catalyst for needing help due to Wanda's insane power level as we documented. So, whom could Doctor Strange go and recruit? That's the beautiful part. There are a lot of candidates, including some that have been confirmed in the MCU at large, such as Blade. Oh yeah, remember, at the 2019 Comic-Con, they confirmed that Masahara Ali would be donning the role of Blade sometime in the future, but didn't give a date or time. So perhaps Doctor Strange recruits him for an adventure through the multiverse and that lets fans gauge the performance and thus let Marvel know that his movie needs to happen sooner rather than later. Then there is Ghost Rider, a character that used to belong to Fox, but now, because of the buyout by Disney, is now fully in the realm of the MCU, and was even used by Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. More than likely, they'll go the Johnny Blaze route, but you never know. There are other characters that could work as well, like Man-Thing, also confirmed via Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Satana, Magic, if they want to bring in the X-Men, and more. Strange making his own Avengers team for this movie could bring a lot of attention to it, so you can't count it out. Mystery characters. Okay, here's a fun one for you. Because we actually know this is happening, as it came from the lips of Kevin Feige himself, he noted that there was going to be some mystery characters that people wouldn't be able to predict or guess, which is something that obviously lends an air of mystery to the film. Not the least of which is that one of these characters is someone that Feige says Marvel Studios has wanted to put into the MCU for a long time. Exciting, isn't it? So, who could the character be? That's a bit uncertain, because Kevin Feige most definitely has a love of Marvel Comics history, and he wants to bring as many of the best characters forward as possible, while also going and getting ones you wouldn't expect, which might be what is happening here. Plus, it could be that one of the supernatural Avengers I mentioned earlier might just be the pick, or it could be another character like America Chavez or Brother Voodoo, whom have also been rumored for this film. That's one of the beauties of the Multiverse of Madness. With so many universes that can potentially be mined for characters, there are a lot of possibilities out there. Or at least, there might have been. To be, or not to be, horrifying. There's no doubt that the MCU has been a massive success from basically start to finish. However, there are times when Disney and Marvel Studios can get in its own way, which you could see via films like Age of Ultron 
for The Dark World and now Multiverse of Madness. Why do we say this? Well, after the success of the first film, director Scott Derrickson was contracted to do the sequel, which is fair and logical. But not too long after it was confirmed to be coming, Derrickson left. He claimed it was amicable, but it's not certain if that's really true. The rumored reason for his departure is that Marvel wouldn't let him take the film in the dark direction he wanted to go into, meaning he wanted to be a true horror film of sorts, but with a Marvel twist. But apparently that was too much for Marvel and Disney, and thus he's gone from the directing chair. Does this mean Multiverse of Madness is doomed? Not even close. Sam Raimi has done great films in the past, including the first two Spider-Man films. However, it might mean he's going to be a bit more hamstrung. Only time will tell. There you go. A look at Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and how it's shaping up to be a very interesting film if the rumors hold out to be true. Which of these rumors do you personally hope to be true? Would you be up for Tobey Maguire being Spider-Man one last time? Or would you prefer this to be more of a supernatural affair? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time on the channel.